Yep, today I'll be cleaning the throttle body. All right, everybody, so today's throttle body video will, it's sort of like two videos in one. Some of you may have seen the first throttle body cleaning video I uploaded, which I then took down. The parts I'm gonna do today, I wanted to add to that initial video instead of doing two videos like I initially planned. So the first part of this video will be like a partial throttle body cleaning where you do not actually remove the throttle body. And that'll be the first part of the video that was already uploaded. And the second part of the video is going to be a full throttle body cleaning, which you do need to buy this gasket for. I will link to this below in the description and I'll go ahead and put a timestamp below so if you just want to see the full version you can see where to go for that. And as you can see just a few basic tools needed to do this great preventative maintenance. To get started a pair of gloves just to keep your hands clean, a few bungee cords, a used toothbrush. Do not use your regular toothbrush that you put in your mouth that's disgusting. A regular screwdriver, doesn't matter if it's flathead or a Phillips head. A socket wrench or a power socket wrench with a 10 millimeter socket. Either some shop cloths, old rags, microfiber towels, whatever, just to clean up the mess. And of course, your throttle body cleaner from CRC. As always, the links for all this stuff, except for the toothbrush, are down in the description below. First step, just to be safe, we are going to disconnect the battery. So take your 10 millimeter socket and disconnect the negative battery lead, fold it off to the side so it's not in contact with any metal, just to make sure you don't actually short anything out. After you disconnect the battery, if you are running the factory engine cover, I usually do not, but if you are running it, to remove it, there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one on the left right here, the other on the right right there. Again, just use your 10 millimeter socket. Once the bolts are removed, slide it up to about 45 degrees and it will simply pull free from the back right there. Once the plastic engine cover is off, you can see it exposes most of the air filter, which we are going to detach. There is one clip here and one right below it. Just take them from the right, pull them to the left. They will pop free. You will shimmy the air cleaner out of the way. And if it's been a while since you actually checked your air filter, go ahead and check the condition of that and swap it out since we're in here anyway. Then I'm going to take the bungee cord and sort of just to get this out of the way so I don't have to take the whole thing off, I'm going to loop it around probably my hood strut right there or you could use your antenna stock or just anything over here to pull this out of the way so you can access the throttle body. Next we are going to remove this plastic piece right here that also has your MAF sensor in it. There are two 10 millimeter bolts first right here at the bottom by the clips for your air box. You will need to slide those out of the way so you can get your 10 millimeter bit in there. That is the first one. Second one is right at the back right there. And with the two bolts holding the housing on, next we are going to remove this screw right here, holding the hose clamp connecting to the throttle body. You can do this either with a Phillips head screwdriver or again, just use your 10 millimeter bit. We're going to loosen this up enough so we can slide this off the throttle body. I mean, why wouldn't there be a wood chipper actor while I'm trying to do the video? My God, why? For the next step, we need to take this whole black piece right here and slide it to the left once it's free of the neck of the throttle body. When you're doing this, just go slow and steady because there are, you can see, plenty of hoses, including your MAF, all connected. You don't want to rip this free and risk damaging any of that. So I found it easiest just to grab sort of down here where you took that first bolt off and just sort of shimmy it back and forth while slowly pulling to the left. Just be careful. Don't rush this process. You can see it does sort of pop free with a little bit of force, so just be prepared for it so it doesn't go ripping any of those wires or hoses. Next, I'm going to take the first of my rags and plug it in the hole right here, which comes after the MAF and the airflow into your engine, just to keep any crud from getting in there. Obviously when you do that, do not jam it in too far. Your MAF is about six or seven inches to the left of the opening. You do not want to touch the MAF that is hanging down there with anything and risk damaging it. A few hundred bucks to replace. And you can see if you grab the neck that we just loosened and sort of lift it up, 
it gives you a lot more room to get in here to actually clean the throttle body. So I'm gonna take another of my bungee cords and sort of just pull that out of the way so I can have easy access. And for this bungee cord, just because it was a little longer, I just hooked it right in there on the neck and looped it to my antenna over here just to give it enough tension, I guess. Not too much tension, but just enough so it's not gonna fall back down. All right, since the throttle body cleaner is, as the name implied, specifically for the throttle body, I will be taking a few of my shop rags. You can use those shop towels, whatever. I'm gonna put this under the opening for the throttle body just to keep any loose cleaner from splashing on anything else. I guess sort of like that's gonna be good. Really just covering, so the only thing open around here, not like I'm gonna be doing wild sprays or anything like that, no Peter North shots, just so it goes directly into the throttle body and nowhere else. No! I'm gonna start spraying the throttle body cleaner on the inside of the throttle body. Got the nose attachment on there. Make sure you read the directions on the back of this. Obviously, you only wanna get it on the inside of the throttle body, nothing else. That's why I have the cloth down there to catch any overspray or drippage. On the back, it does say to spray in little bursts so don't just drown the thing, but you do wanna get it all the way inside and it said, if possible, move the butterfly flap while you're doing this. So I'm gonna get everything wet with this and use the toothbrush and a rag to wipe out the inside. You can also lift up on the screwdriver just to open that a little more and make sure you get that throttle body cleaner all the way back and use that in conjunction with your toothbrush. Already nasty back there. Getting everything I can reach and I'll spray some more throttle body cleaner in there. I might have to go rinse the toothbrush off. You can see, looks like I'm suffering from a severe case of gingivitis or something like that. Okay, obviously I didn't film the entire cleaning process. That'd get pretty boring quickly, but here's the aftermath. Here's the rag I was using. There's the one catching the spillage, which looked like my underwear after the first time I watched the ring. And the toothbrush was invaluable. I couldn't really rinse this off in the sink to clean it, so I just hit it with some of the throttle body cleaner. Rinsed it off and then held the butterfly opening and got as far back as I could, both top and bottom. Make sure you do clean the inside and outside of that butterfly opening. Get the top, sides, as far as you can comfortably reach this in. Just do it for a few passes, especially if it's been as long. Like for this time, it was my first time ever cleaning this, so it was filthier than normal, even though it wasn't as dirty as I thought, but the head of the toothbrush will get black and nasty pretty quick. So go ahead and pull it out, clean it off, put it back in. That's, That's what she said. All in all, probably spent about 10 minutes with the rag, the throttle body cleaner, and the toothbrush cleaning out the inside of this bad boy. Looks pretty good. You can't really see anything on camera because it's all dark in there and the flap is closed, but definitely pleased with how much of the crud I got out of there. And with a fresh rag, I did wipe as much of the throttle body cleaner liquid off as I could. It should dry pretty quickly, just like the map cleaner or that other stuff. It evaporates pretty quickly, but there's probably still some on the back side of the throttle body, so don't be alarmed if the first time you start your truck, and I'll show this in just a second, if it sputters, you're supposed to be able to just give it a little gas when you're trying to start, and that'll help the engine start and it'll quickly burn off the throttle body stuff. So if you have any weird symptoms immediately after, don't worry, that's just the excess cleaner getting burned off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the rags and just put everything back together in reverse order. And speaking of starting your truck, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a start, let it sort of idle for a few minutes just to make sure everything's okay. Remember your battery was disconnected, so usually the first time you try to start your truck after reconnecting the battery, if it's been unplugged for like five, 10 minutes or more, it usually doesn't start anyway. And you might get some sputtering while trying to start it anyway while the engine is trying to turn over just because of that extra cleaner getting burned off. So if that happens, just give it a little gas. So here's what it looks like.
hear that four liter roar, baby. Yeah. It is idling a little louder than normal, but again, that's just the stuff burning off. So I'm gonna let it run for about five minutes or so just to let the engine get back to normal. It's already sounding better and it's only been like 30 seconds. It was pretty loud at first. Feels like it's already dropped about half the noise at least. All right guys, just went for a quick test drive. Engine is back to normal. Sounds fine, runs fine, no codes, none of that stuff. Everything is all right. And as far as the full throttle body cleaning, I am going to remove the throttle body in just a second, but the steps are the same to go ahead and get all this stuff bungeed out of the way from the first part of the video, so check that out if you have not already. I'm going to put down some more rags uh, down here just in a little bit, shop towels to catch the throttle body spray. Again, the battery, the negative terminal, is disconnected. I'm not going to disconnect the plug for the throttle body or any of the hoses or anything. There'll be plenty of slack in this to move it around and clean what I need to get cleaned. To get the actual throttle body loose so you can get to the back part and clean it, there are four bolts. They are still the 10 millimeter. There's one right here, one right there, another one right there, and the fourth one, I can't actually see it because I'm short and my bumper's sticking, but it is right here. My finger's touching it right there. Hopefully that will show up on camera for you. And there you can see I have the throttle body removed. There's plenty of slack to be able to get to the front, back, and even the back here, this plastic piece right here. Before you actually get started, this is a superb time to check to make sure the gasket you ordered is the same size, so the factory gasket is still in there. Just going to hold the other one up. It looks like a perfect overlap, so I'm going to leave that in there for now, and then clean this last and pop this in so I know which way it's oriented. I'm not sure if this is like symmetrical or not. I will put a part number and a link for this down below so you can grab that. Now for the cleaning part, I will be using the same throttle body cleaner, obviously, to hit the back side of the metal housing here, and I'm going to actually spray the throttle body cleaner on a microfiber towel to sort of wipe on the inside of the plastic housing on the right of the throttle body. The less of this stuff you get, like further in your intake here, it will be easier to start your truck for the first time so you have less of this stuff to burn off. And this is a white microfiber towel, you'll see just how filthy this gets. Don't use like paper towels and stuff in here because if you get... Any piece that you know, like falls off or breaks off and gets sucked in there, you know that's not going to be good for your engine. So I'll sort of do like a time lapse, speed it up, so you can see just how nasty this cloth gets. And again, I already cleaned the outside of the throttle body and what I could reach on the inside with a toothbrush so it was cleaner than it was. I'm betting it's still going to be pretty filthy though. gasket just pulls right out. I just used a little pick just to get, get it started. And it does look like it's symmetrical, so I don't think there's a front or back. And the gasket literally just presses right in. Make sure you go all the way around with there's like a little nub right at the top. Press it as firm as it'll go. I suppose you might be able to reuse your old gasket if you don't want to spend the 10 bucks or whatever I think it was. Mine looked fine. My truck has 56,000 miles on it. Doesn't seem like something that's really going to wear away that quickly. It's pretty thick rubber, but might as well change it while you're in here just for that peace of mind. Because if any air gets in between the throttle body and the rest of your intake manifold, it sort of, sort of defeats the whole purpose anyway. little dirty on the inside of that first wipe, but not too bad, really. I'm just going to spray just a little right here at the top, at the front, and give that a good wipe. Yeah, not too bad compared to the actual throttle body. All 
All right, guys, that is it. As far as the full throttle body cleaning, I'm just sort of letting it air dry for a few minutes before I bolt everything back together. That'd be that much easier to start the truck. But here's the rag just for the full throttle body cleaning. Again, I already did the front part. So after seeing this rag, I would definitely recommend just going ahead and removing the throttle body, changing that gasket and doing the full cleaning. Much more efficient. Get a lot of that crap out of there. Get your engine running better. Hopefully grab a few horsepower and miles per gallon, but maybe not. All right, guys, got the throttle body bolted back on. Just hand tight for now. I will say when you are putting this bottom left bolt on, just be careful not to drop it down in here. It'll be a pain. There's wires and hoses and everything down there. Just be careful not to drop that one. These are just barely hand tight because you do need to torque these to nine foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. Nine times 12 is 108, which I'm gonna use inch pounds because I got a new like micro torque wrench for these it's a lot easier to do inch pounds sometimes using the conversion because setting your torque wrench to nine pounds, some of them don't even go that low. I think some of the regular ones start at like 20. So I got this one, 108 inch pounds. I'm gonna get those torqued down and really just putting everything back together. Don't forget to take out any of the rags you use to keep stuff from falling in and that is it. As always, thanks so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Comment below, let me know if you have cleaned your throttle body before, or if you are like me, have waited way too long to do it. Love to hear your thoughts on that. And let me know if you thought the video was useful. I love doing these Avoid the Steelership videos, helping you guys keep your Tacomas running as long as possible. And as always, I will see you in the next video.